A wizard who lost his power. A little girl, now a woman, who was once the priestess of darkness. And a girl, a girl so emotionally and physically scarred that seems to feel no emotion. Hello, fellow book questers! It is I, Aaron the Book Quester. Today I have this awesome, epic fantasy book. Tehanhu, the fourth book in the Earth Sea Cycle by Ursula K. Le Guin. And well, let's get right on to it. Before I get on with the specifics of this book, um, the author, there is a um, little afterword from the author, and what he says is that he basically says that from this book on, he didn't really, it isn't, he wanted to call the the series, the Earth Sea trilogies, because because Earth Earth Sea book one, two, three connected, but then after that, of uh, four, five, six, that connected, and then those two, one, two, three, and four, five, six didn't really, they, they aren't really the same theme. So that's what he said, and just be reminded of that and thought think about that while I'm explaining. And well, let's get right on to it. So this book is about two old characters that we probably remember from the recent Earth Sea books. From the tombs of Atuan, Tenar, the white lady of the Ring of Peace. She is a karg, and since then she had grown up to be a lovely woman. And it has been roughly around 25 years since the last time, tombs of Atuan, and now she has lived uh, a normal life, and she's having a farm, and the and the book starts with a beloved old master's death. You guessed it, Ojian, the silent Jed's true mentor and master. Ojian was dying, and there Tenar was there to greet him, and uh, Ojian finally, with a final word, saying that everything that they know of was changing dies. In my opinion, it's slightly ominous. And then a dragon comes. Kalasine, the eldest. The dragon, the king of the dragons, and the eldest of them all. And on his back, the final dragon lord, the archmage, Sparrowhawk. Lord Sparrowhawk, Jet, his true name. Tenar's old companion from the tombs of Atuan had come. But Jed was in no condition to talk. He was in a sort of coma, and it seemed that he would not breathe again. But with the little healing brew of a witch and a couple days of rest, he finally woke up and found that he had no powers. It seemed that he had spent all of his powers when closing the doors between life and death. The door, I mean the gap, I mean the rip that the ne necromancer Cobb had managed to make. Of course, this kind of gap had been made by Jed before when he was barely an apprentice. And then the Archmage then had closed it, but had used up all his life force and uh, he died. So, so just I'm just saying that Jed seems to be a lot more powerful than the old Archmage. Even though he lost his powers, he didn't die. And Jed, he is devastated that he lost his powers. After all, I would be devastated if I was an almighty, respected wizard with his great magic and his staff running around. And then one day, he uses all his powers that you know that it's necessary. And you can't blame anyone else because it had to be done. That frustration, I think it could get anyone, even someone as battle-worn as Lord Sparrowhawk. And she spends some time not talking to Tenar and just, just moping around, I guess, just working as a shepherd, living a normal life. And then, the, and then she, Tenar starts to talk about the kid that she had with her. Uh, he, the kid that she had with her was really scarred. What happened was that when she was 
I think pretty sure five, five or six years old, she was raped and she was burnt and beaten and she was basically abused. And basically what happened that it scarred her emotionally and physically. And now she looks kind of like a demon. No offense. And what what happens is that she she talks like she has no emotion and it's just really really bad. And and she and Tenar knows that Ojian said that everything was changing and she had Ojian had also said to teach her the scarred little girl everything. And when she thought everything, she, uh, he, she thought that Ojia meant everything, even the great magecraft. And so, together with Jed, they tried to teach her. Um, not magic at first, songs, great tales and stuff, and they're, they're trying to heal her. And then something even worse happens. Teha, our dear little scarred little girls, old, let's say, tormentors, rapers, the ones who had made her like this, they have come back. And they were working with a wizard, a wizard who I personally do not want to talk about. And he, they capture Tenar and Jed. And well, I will not get into the details of this, but there are some words that I should not speak in this kind of video and there are also some implications that I shouldn't speak of in these videos. So I'll just say this. This this book is not as just magic and just wizardry and stuff like that or the first three books. It's more mm, just it's just more adultish, so recommended for teenage years. Anyway, uh if I go on they are captured, but then Kalasine comes, the eldest dragon, and destroys the wizard and the ones who are capturing Jed and Tenar and rescues them. Why had he come? Because of the calm. The call of the emotionally scarred little girl. The girl who was in fact the daughter of Kalasine, the daughter of the eldest, a dragon woman. Tehahu. Now she calls herself. And so the book draws to an end. And our dear author, in his afterword, talks that this was a very different book. After all, the first three books were exciting adventures of magic, the battles between good and evil, the corruption, the pride, the fighting, the conflict. That's what the first three books about life and death. White and black, and darkness and light. But this one, it was a little different. It was Urs Ursula says that he, she, yeah, she wanted everyone to know that even little little people, normal people, she wanted to tell the tale of normal people this time, not great wizards or 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 heroes. She said that she wasn't trying to write a book about heroes and wizards. She was trying to write something about the normal people and their conflicts. And I guess that's understandable. But if I'm honest, the first three books were way better than this book. But even so, it leaves a questioning message and a lovely little thought to think about. And like always, your book quester and the book quester. An awesome book to read, and it was as always a good old page turn.